Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at square roots and we are going to answer the question, what is a square root and how do I approximate a non-perfect square? Um, so before we can get talking about square roots, we need to talk about squaring a number because the square root is the op of that. So squaring a number is multiplying a number by itself. Or you could think of it as raising it to a power of two. And when we think about the area of a square shape, it is just the side length squared. So for example, if I have this square right here and the area of it is 16, I got that by doing four squared. These right here up top are the first 15 perfect squares. So one squared, two squared, and so on. These numbers are special because whenever you take the square root of them, you get a whole number. So let's talk about square roots a little bit more now. So square root of a number, it is just doing the inverse or the opposite of squaring a number. The side length of a square shape is equivalent to the square root of the area. So let's look at that here. My area here was 16. My side length was four. So that means the square root of 16 is four. So square root is just figuring out what two numbers that are the same did I multiply to get the squared number. Okay, so like I talked about, these are perfect squares that are made whenever you square a whole number and when you take the square root, you get whole numbers. Non-perfect squares are numbers whose squares do not result in a whole number. So examples of non-perfect squares are anything except for these numbers up here. So a non-perfect square Something between 9 and 16 would work, so like square root of 15. Anything that is not up here would work for a non-perfect square. So maybe square root of 200, because um, I don't see that up here. And then square root of a decimal would work too. So one thing that you'll need to know how to do in 8th grade is estimate non-perfect squares. And we can do that by looking at our perfect squares up here and figuring out what two perfect squares it lies between. So this one right here, it says estimate the square root of 78 by using the number line and determining what two perfect squares it lies between. So square root of 78, if I go up here, 78 is between 64 and 81. So the square root of 78 will be between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. Square root of 64 is eight, square root of 81 is nine. So 64 and 81, 78 is closer to 81. So I'm gonna put that about right here. So I'm going to estimate that to be about 8.8. .8. It's pretty close to square root of 81, which is nine. Now let's double check that with our calculator. So I'm gonna use that key right there, square root of 78, and I get a long decimal, and it does round to about 8.8, .8, so looks like I did that correctly. Okay, let's look at square root of 150. Let's try to use this number line to help us. So square root of 150, 150 would be between 144 and 169, which is 12 squared and 13 squared. So it's between square root of 144 and 169. Square root of 144 is 12, square root of 169 is 13. And 150, square root of 150 is closer to square root of 144. So I'm gonna put that here. So I know that this number is going to be between 12 and 13, but it looks like it's closer to 12. So I'm going to say about 12.2, and I'm gonna use the calculator to verify. The square root of 150, yes, it is about 12.2. 
Okay, so you do not always have to go through this whole process to get your square roots. You can just use the calculator. I just wanted to show you the concept of where square roots come from. Um, so let's just use our calculator for the next few. This next one says point F is shown on the number line below. Which value is best represented by point F? So I'm gonna go through these square roots and see which of the square roots simplifies to a number between three and four, but is closer to four. So square root of 3.7 is 1.9. That is not between three and four, so that one won't work. Okay, next one is square root of 13.7. Oops, I need to clear this. Okay, square root of 13.7. That's between three and four, and it is closer to four, so that one might work. Let's check the other ones. C is square root of 3.3. .3. I get 1.8. No, that's not between three and four. And then D is square root of 10.9. That is 3.3. .3. So I'm kind of between 3.7 and 3.3. .3. Well, F is closer to 4 and 3.7 is closer to 4, so that must be my answer. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says, which point on the number line best represents the location of square root of 76? So I need to figure out what square root of 76 is approximately as a decimal. Don't know what happened there. I'm going to try again. Okay, square root of 76 and I get about 8.7. So it needs to be between eight and nine, so point A is out, and it needs to be closer to nine. So B is out, but it's not 8.9, so this one's probably best, point C. Okay, let's look at number five, a square pool has an area of 169 feet squared. What is the side length of the pool? So remember what we said up here, to find a side length, you take the square root of the area. So to find the side length of a square, I just need to take the square root of it. And the square root of 169, that's one of our perfect squares, it's 13. So the side length is 13 feet. You can verify because 13 times 13 would equal 169. Okay, we're gonna skip number six for now. That might be one that we go over in small groups. Um, number seven and number eight, I just wanna make sure that you know how to type expressions with square roots into the calculator. It's important that you use the arrow keys. So square root of 100, and then you need to arrow out to the right because that minus 11 is not under that square root or radical symbol anymore. So the answer to this one is negative one. You could also think of this as 10 minus 11, which is negative one. Okay, these are tricky to type into the calculator and you'll see them a lot in eighth grade. You just need to remember that you have to arrow out of the square root of 33. So we're gonna do square root of 33, you need to arrow out and then hit divided by three. That divided by three is not under the square root sign. And that is going to be, it says round to the nearest hundredth, so that'll be about 1.91. 1 